This is Double Threshold Training for Skiing 101. Chapters are in the description. Performance Determining Factors In endurance sports, in cross-country skiing, and in all other typical endurance sports, the athlete with the highest average speed wins the competition. The average speed in cross-country skiing is determined by your energy turnover per unit of time watts and work economy cost of travel, aerobic capacity, in races in cross-country skiing that lasts for 30 minutes or more, at least 95% of energy will come from aerobic energy conversion. Aerobic capacity will therefore be the most important factor in maintaining a high average speed throughout the competition. Vo to max. Your aerobic capacity is determined by your Vo to max and the utilization rate of your Vo to max in large groups with varying levels of performance. There has been shown to be a good correlation between Vo to max values and performance. In endurance sports, the connection, on the other hand, is weak when comparing homogeneous groups of athletes. This means that a high Vo to max is a prerequisite for achieving good performance in endurance sports, but a high Vo to max is not necessarily decisive for success or not. Utilization rate. The degree of utilization says something about what percentage of Vo to max the athlete utilizes during prolonged work at a given intensity speed. In a homogeneous group of athletes, there will not necessarily be a correlation between degree of utilization and performance, but athletes at a high level of performance will usually have a relatively good degree of utilization. Work economy. The O2 consumption per meter is a measure of the athlete's work economy, improved work economy, the athlete's technique, external conditions, snow conditions, wind, temperature, and equipment skis, lubrication, shoes, poles, will have a major impact on the athlete's work economy. The total duration of training in the activity used in competition is the single factor that most positively affected the work economy. It seems logical on the basis that the athlete will naturally improve the technique on the basis that he trains more on what he will become good at. Anaerobic threshold. Threshold speed in various endurance sports is the single best factor for predicting performance. This is probably largely because the athlete's threshold speed is determined by the athlete's vote to max, degree of utilization and work economy, which are the three most significant performance determining factors in aerobic endurance sports. It's important to note that because of the courses in cross-country skiing, it is more important to have a high vote to max than other endurance sports with the same competition time. Several studies have investigated the effect of training on anaerobic threshold. The results from several of these investigations have shown that the training has led to a significant improvement in threshold speed. The increase in threshold speed has both been related to an improvement in work economy, Vo to max and the degree of utilization. The literature suggests that it takes longer to develop work economy and the degree of utilization than it takes to develop the athlete's Vo to max. Athletes in skiing have often reached their highest Vo to max relatively early in their careers 20-20 for years, but have nevertheless improved their performance in the following years. In the same period, the athletes have seen that the threshold speed has increased, which suggests that the athletes have made better use of Vo to max and or, or a better working economy. What is threshold training? The anaerobic threshold is often defined as the highest workload during continuous dynamic work, where large muscle groups are used and where there is a balance between the production and elimination of lactate. Threshold training is training close to this intensity. How to find your optimal zone? When managing your intensity, you can use many objective measurements. The most common ones are power, pace, lactate, and heart rate. You should also get a subjective feeling for where your threshold is because this is the most practical measurement. Power and pace. Power and pace are the most accurate to measure, but doesn't tell us about the intensity without putting it into context. Some basic physics. Force equals mass acceleration. What equals force distance? Power equals what time? As noted earlier, the average speed in Cross-country skiing is determined by your energy turnover per unit of time watts. 
and work economy cost of travel. The relationship between power and pace is not linear, even when we do constant incline and increasing only. The speed, this is due to factors such as wind resistance, playing a role. Your weight also influences how much power is needed to sustain a certain speed. Air resistance increases proportionally with the square of the speed, which means that the forces act against the motion becomes more significant at higher speeds. In addition, other factors such as terrain slope, elasticity of materials, and other complex dynamic conditions can lead to non-linear relationships between force and speed. A 60-minute functional threshold test in running, skier or cycling can be a nice way to develop a power or pace that you can base your training intensity of, but I would highly recommend using lactate, heart rate and feeling as well if you are going to do double threshold workouts is skiing. It is hard to do a functional threshold test outdoors that is reliable for skiing because of different weather conditions. But you can try to do a 60-minute functional threshold test or a 20-30 km test race in a roller ski track and lap your times every round. You can use this test to find the correct pace for your threshold intervals in the same lap. Lactate. If you are doing intervals, the lactate should be steady when doing the same pace. This means that you must find the highest pace where the lactate is still steady. This can be done by doing 5-minute intervals on a treadmill where you do two intervals at the same pace before increasing the velocity. When the second interval has a big jump in lactate, you have gone past your threshold. Sources of error. A standard lactate meter has potentially some sources of error. When using the lactate pro to 0.0, you only take samples of O3L of blood. This means that if you get some other liquid in the lactate meter, this will influence the blood sample a lot. Sweat has 10 to 50 times more lactate than blood, so getting sweat in your blood sample will produce a too high of a lactate value. Getting water in your blood sample will produce a too low of a lactate value. It is easiest to get accurate measurements indoors when you can easily dry of all your sweat. It also often doesn't rain indoors so you don't have to worry about watering down the blood sample. Lactate measurements for skiers indoors will mostly include Rolerski treadmills, running treadmills, and different kinds of double pulling machines. Having some standardized tests or workouts indoors will give you most value for your lactate measurements because you can have the same pace or wattage constantly and don't have to worry about interference with the weather outside. When doing outdoors testing in Rolerski tracks, you have to think about where you are testing lactate. If you are measuring at the top of a hill or bottom of a hill will heavily influence the results of the measurement. Your pacing during the lap will also influence the result. If you start slow and finish fast, or start fast and finish slow, the later one will probably give you a higher measurement. If you are going to have standardized test in Rolerski tracks, I will give you some tips. Use the same roller skis every time. Do it solo same wind resistance every time. Note the weather temperature, rainfall, wind, etc. Use 3 minus 4 checkpoints during the lap to see that your pacing is the same from time to time. Avoid getting sweat or water in your lactate meter. Interpretation of the lactate samples. Lower than normal. Tired body or lack of carbs. Higher than normal. Indicates good shape or high amount of carbs. A lot higher than normal. Bad shape. Takes longer to stabilize after a high intensity set. Indication of tired body. Lactate depends on nutrition and training status. Standard level of 4 mole often too high for top level athletes. Staying between 20 and 35 is often more optimal and gives you a chance to do more volume without wearing down. Heart rate. Heart rate monitors are often fairly accurate, but not perfect. There are some things you should take into consideration when analyzing your heart rate during a workout. Lower than normal, tired body or bad warm-up. Low during warm-up, high during intervals. Indicates very good shape. Higher than normal, warm weather or body or sickness. Higher during rest. Indicates sickness or high stress levels in general. Staying between 82 minus 87 is optimal for most athletes and even up towards 90 minus 92 for top level athletes. Feeling. You should use these objective instruments to calibrate your feeling 
so you know how your body should feel like when doing threshold intensity. This is beneficial when it is non-practical or non-reliable to test lactate or pace or power or heart rate, so you can still maintain correct intensity. After a long period of time without calibrating your feeling, you may drift away from your correct threshold intensity. I highly recommend not relying fully on your feeling all the time when doing threshold training. Why double threshold training? The benefits of doing double threshold training can be summed up like this. Increased total training volume, splitting the threshold workout into two sessions allows you to increase the overall training volume for the day. Faster recovery by spreading the training load over to sessions. Instead of one long session, you reduce the total time your body is under stress during one workout. Improved quality of each session, you have the ability to have both classic and skating in the same day, allowing you to have a higher frequency with the specific movements and possibly achieving a better work economy as a result of this. Mental benefits. Some athletes prefer shorter sessions and breaking down the workouts can make them more mentally manageable. Theory of clustering workouts. One benefit of doing double threshold instead of doing threshold to days in a row is that your body has a window of time where it is very receptive to hard training before it wants to recover. This may be very individualized, so you need to find out how long this window is and if double threshold is something for you. Another benefit of clustering your threshold sessions in the same day and having easy days between is that the risk of overtraining reduces dramatically compared to having threshold sessions multiple days in a row. When having easy days between hard days, your body gets a chance to calibrate and adjust in this day between. Some general tips. Use both low threshold sessions, progressive threshold sessions and high threshold sessions in your training. During low threshold sessions, stay 0515 below your threshold lactate. This session is good after sickness and when you want to do more volume. During progressive sessions, start 10 minus 15 below your threshold pace and work your way up to threshold during the intervals. Most athletes experience that you can have a higher pace at threshold lactate when doing progressive intervals than when doing steady state. So this is a good way to train closer to your competition pace at the end of a threshold workout without the recovery time getting too high. During steady sessions, you should aim to be as close to your threshold as possible. For as long as possible, you should do this kind of workouts only when your body is fully recovered. What workouts to do? This depends on what needs you have in a particular period and what bottlenecks you have in your skiing. Game. Some people need shorter intervals to get more volume done closer to your competition speed, while other needs to get better doing continues work. Only your imagination sets the limit for what workouts you can do. Should you do double threshold? I don't recommend young athletes doing double threshold work. Young athletes should rather focus on having one quality interval on interval days and focus mainly on vote to max workouts. I don't recommend it to 40 year old midlife crisis people who is trying to beat their boss at Vasilopit either. You should be sleeping a minimum of 60 minutes between workouts and consume a lot of carbs during the threshold days. If you are unable to do this, the quality of the second workout will be too low to produce desired results. For top athletes, I would recommend doing a total volume of 75105 minutes on a threshold day for a skier. You can start lower than 75 minutes to build up the work capacity to do the recommended volume. But to see major benefits from double threshold work, both the volume and quality should be higher and better than when doing single threshold work. Going higher than 105 minutes can probably be beneficial for some athletes, but one should build up the work capacity doing shorter threshold days. First before one tries to increase the volume, I recommend that you do mostly interval work and not continuous work due to the higher demand. Continuous work has on your body. Easy days. Between the interval days you should stay below 10 mole in lactate to recover optimally between sessions. 
The benefit of easy sessions is a better work economy and allowing your body to recover between interval days. This is one of the reasons you need to be on a high level to do double threshold training because lower level athlete is not capable at staying below 10 mole on easy sessions with sufficient technique to better your work economy. I wasn't able to include everything in this video because the video would have been too long. I have a Word document with 3000 words I made on this. So if you have any questions feel free to comment below or send me an email link in description.